Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to you, O God. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. At your baptism in the Jordan, O Lord, the worship of the Trinity was revealed. For the Father's voice bore witness to you by calling you his beloved Son, and the Spirit in the form of a dove confirmed the truth of these words. O Christ God, who have appeared to us and enlightened the world, glory to you, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. O Theotokos, you are the true vine laden with the fruit of life. Wherefore, we implore you, O Lady, to intercede together with the apostles and all the saints, that we may obtain mercy for our souls. Blessed is the Lord our God, blessed is the Lord day by day. May the God of our salvation smooth our path. Our God is the God of salvation. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. O Holy Trinity, have mercy on us, Lord, cleanse us from our sins, master, pardon our iniquities. Holy one, visit and heal our infirmities for your name's sake. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Tonight, we give the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today you have appeared, O Lord, to the universe. In your light, O Christ, our God, has been impressed upon us, who sing to you with full knowledge. You came and appeared, O inaccessible light. Lord have mercy, 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 Lord have O you who at all times and places are worshiped and glorified both in heaven and on earth, Christ God, long suffering, generous in mercy, and rich in compassion, loving to the just and merciful to the sinner, O you who call all people to repentance through the promise of blessings to come, deign, O Lord, at this very hour to receive our supplications and to direct our lives in the way of your commandments, sanctify our souls, purify our bodies, set our minds right, cleanse our thoughts, deliver us from any affliction, wrath, danger, and need. Surround us with your holy angels, so that guided and guarded in their camp we may reach the oneness of the faith and the knowledge of your unutterable glory. For you are blessed under the ages of ages. Amen. Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and under the ages of ages. Amen. More honorable than the cherubim, and beyond compare, more glorious than the seraphim, who without corruption did give birth to God the Word, the very Theotokos, who do we magnify. Give the blessing, Father, in the name of the Lord. May God be merciful to us, and bless us, and cause the light of his countenance to shine upon us, and have mercy on us. Amen. O Master God, Almighty Father, only begotten Son, Lord Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit, one God and one might, have mercy on us sinners, and save us, your unworthy servants, according to the ways of your wisdom. We are blessed under the ages of ages. Amen. Come, let us worship God, our King, and by down before him. Come, let us worship Christ God, our King, and by down before him. And let us worship Christ, the King, and our God, and our down before him. Say, Lord, I am in judgment by your mighty God. Hear my prayer, listen to the words of my mouth. For strangers are risen up against me, and powerful men have pursued my soul instead of contemplating God. Behold, God is my helper, and the Lord is the sustainer of my soul. He will return evil upon my enemies. <clears throat> he will destroy them in his truth. With eager heart, I will sacrifice to you. I will praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. You have delivered me from all my affliction and my eyes have looked down on my enemies. O oh Lord, listen to my prayer and do not overlook my supplication. Give heed to me and answer me. I was pleased in my meditation and I travel with the enemy's charge, not the oppression of the wicked one. They brought thine evil upon me and seized with anger against me. My heart recoiled within me, the anguish of death befell me. Their intending came upon me and darkness covered me up. I said, who will give me wings like a dove, and I shall fly and I shall come to rest? Behold, I have fled to these places and made the wilderness my home. I have waited for God to deliver me from the impartiveness and in this storm. O Lord, confine and divide their tongues, for I have seen evil and strife in the time. They have neither words up its ground parts inside, there is sin and trouble and injustice, usury and fraud, and ever absent from its public square. 
Had I been a fool who insulted me, that I could have endured him. Had he given me, he stood up against me, from him I could have been. But to a man of kindred soul, my guide, my closer prison, with whom I had in sweet companionship and walked in harmony within God's heart, may death come down upon them, may they fall into his lives. For evil is within their dwellings in the very midst of them. As for me, I have the guilt for God, and the Lord has heard me. I trust God in me. I will cry and call, and he will hear my voice. He will deliver my soul and peace from those who can close to me from the cry that surrounds me. God, the master, before all these will fear and humble them. For in them <coughs> there is no repentance, for they have not feared God. He offered his hand and self giving, but they broke away from his covenant. They were scattered by the <coughs> anger of his fierce, and the hearts became tight. Their words were smoother than oil, but they themselves were dark. They were burned upon the Lord, and he himself was speeding. He will never let the justice cause to run, and the true Lord will cast him down into the pit of destruction. Men of God, you can not take half the day, and as for me, I will hope in you, O Lord. You dwell up in shelter of the most high, and abide in the shadow of the God of heaven. You will say to the Lord, my wall, my refuge, my God, whom I will trust. He had instantly saved it from the hunter's man, from the deadly pestilence. With his pinions, he will overshadow you, and beneath his wings, you shall find your secure. And your shield, his feet, shall cover you up. You shall not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that lies by day, nor the thing that lurks upon in darkness, nor the pestilence of the end of the moon. Though a thousand are before you, your side and ten thousand at your right, no harm will come to you, but you with your eyes shall observe and see the retribution of the wicked. Because you have said, O Lord, you are my hope, and you have taken him as high as a refuge. No evil shall come close to you, nor shall him stir to push your dwelling. The evil command the angels to watch over all your ways, and your hands they shall carry you to keep trouble with your feet against the stone. Upon the ass and the viper you shall tread, the lion and the dragon you shall trample, because he trusted in me, I will save him, I will protect him from his money. He will call me, and I will answer him, I will listen at the time of distress. I will deliver him and give him glory with length of days. I will feed him and my salvation, I will let him see. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Hallelujah, 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 glory to you, God. Hallelujah, 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 glory to you, God. Hallelujah, 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 glory to you, God. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. At your baptism in the Jordan, O Lord, the worship of the Trinity was revealed. For the Father's voice bore witness to you by calling you his beloved Son, and the Spirit in the form of a dove confirmed the truth of these words. O Christ God, who has appeared to us and enlightened the word, glory to you, both now and forever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Since we have no one in whom to confide because of our many sins, O Virgin, they have told us, intercede for us with the one who was born of you. For our mother's prayer is a powerful means for obtaining the Master's favor. O you who are most worthy of veneration, do not turn away from the pain of a sinner. For the one who will to suffer from the flesh for our sins, full of mercy, is power sufficient to save us. Let your bounties, O Lord, come upon us in haste. For our need has become great indeed. Help us, O God, our Savior, for the glory of your name. Save us, O Master. And forgive us our sins for the sake of your name. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal and merciless, holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal and merciless, holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal and merciless, glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and forever, and to the ages of ages, amen. All most holy trinity of mercy, Lord, forgive us our sins, master, partner, and peace, holy one of the fullness of the land, for our peace, for thy sake. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and forever, and to the ages of ages, amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And this not to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And the power and the glory of the Son, for the Spirit, now and dead, now and the ages of ages. Amen. Today you have appeared, O Lord, to the universe, and your light, O Christ our God, has been impressed upon us, who sing to you with full knowledge. You who came and appeared, O oh, inaccessible light. Hear this and 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 hear this
and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. When Israel went out of Egypt, and the house of Jacob from among a barbarous people, who the prayers of the Thel told us, O Savior, save us. Judea became his sanctuary, Israel his dominion, who the prayers of the Thel told us, O Savior, save us. The sea beheld and fled, Jordan turned back, who the prayers of the Thel told us, O Savior, save us. And thou, Jordan, that thou didst turn back, who the prayers of the Theotokos, O Savior, save us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and forever, and the ages of ages. Amen. Who the prayers of the Theotokos, O Savior, save us. Now 
understand all of it, and we don't. So, let's take the mystery or the sacrament of baptism when we are incorporated into Christ. Very early in the church, the church faced a dilemma. Not very different than the dilemma we face in the church at present. And that dilemma was our Lord was baptized in the Jordan by John and left that as the first sacrament, the first mystery. And 
these people who were pagans, sometimes Jews in the Roman Empire, who were leading often corrupt, immoral lives, they turned to Christ, professed their faith, and were baptized. And by baptism, they were incorporated into the church, into the body of Christ, and their sins were forgiven. They were cleansed of their sins. These were the Christians following the apostles themselves. The problem was, as one of the fathers of the church, although he's never been canonized, recognized is that these Christians were sincere, were committed, but even after they were baptized, they continued to sin. And the three major sins in the church in those days were apostasy, renouncing the faith, usually because, of course, the church was illegal, and so if they were caught by the Roman authorities, they would have to renounce their Christian faith or they'd be tortured to death. Murder was the other big one. And interesting, the third one was adultery. But only if it was known, if it was public. Because then they couldn't say, well, we don't believe in immorality, and then everyone knew that they were living immoral lives. If it wasn't known, if it was private, the church kept it private so that it wouldn't scandalize people and tempt other people to do the same. But if it was public, it was out in the open, it had to be acknowledged and confessed and forgiven. These were the three public sins. And this man I was speaking about, Tertullian, a, father, a great father of the Latin church, probably the, the foremost theologi theologian of the Latin church from North Africa. That's where Latin Christianity really originated from, Rome, in the early days was more Greek still than Latin. It was in Carthage in North Africa that the church, the Latin church, was most Latin. And Tertullian was a, a very devout man, a very uh, rigorous Christian, Catholic. And he began to be scandalized that these newly baptized Christians renounced their faith when they were challenged or were living immoral lives. So the church faced this issue, and we're facing this issue now too, aren't we? The same issue. Even after 2,000 years, the issues hasn't, haven't changed. So, Tertullians and the early church were faced with two choices. Either the baptism wasn't real, the faith wasn't real, these Christians were just hypocrites, because even after they were baptized, Nothing seemed to change in them. They were still corrupt, sinful. <coughs> or 
what happened in baptism, our life of faith, is more complicated, more nuanced than what we just see on the surface. We get a glimpse of this, of course, not in baptism, because most of us are baptized as infants. We don't remember it. But confession and absolution is like a second baptism. And we know that all too well. We go and we confess the same sins again and again and again. And we're resolved not to sin again. And yet at the same time, we are resolved to keep going to confession till the day we die. So there's kind of an ambiguity there. Kind of an ambiguity there. And this is because the faith is a sacrament is a mystery. And unless we have that approach, we're never going to understand the faith. Never. Something goes on inside that is privileged and hidden from prying eyes. We have to work our salvation humbly in prayer and fasting. And nobody needs to know about it except us and God. And we can fall into two extremes which are heretical, which are condemned. One is to say, as a lot of evangelical Christians say, are you saved, brother? I am saved. I am saved. I've been baptized. And often their lives are not all that very different than from before they were baptized. They pretend or they hide or they... Well, the Catholic Church says you don't ever know whether you were saved or not until the day of judgment. Nobody else knows about you and even you don't know about yourself. Only God knows. When we go to confession, we accuse ourselves. That's all we do. But we don't know. We can't, we can't even condemn ourselves. We don't know. We don't know to the day of judgment whether we will be saved. And also the other of what I said. We don't know that we're going to be condemned either. No way of knowing. Only God knows. So when we go around saying, oh, uh, uh, that person's going to go to hell, we're sinning. We're being heretical. Even if we say we are going to go to hell, we are being presumptuous that we know better than God. We just don't know. We accuse ourselves to be on the safe side. Then we will attempt to be better. But it's a mystery. What happens in the soul is a mystery. And we have to leave it in God's hands. So, baptism is this sacrament of grace that incorporates us into the church and washes away our sins. And we have to be sincere, we have to be honest, we have to be upright, we have to try, but we have to avoid the extremes of thinking, one, baptism doesn't make any difference, the sacraments don't make any difference, because we live exactly, we, we, we're not that different before and after. Wrong! Heresy. That would be to say that the sacraments are ineffectual. And the other <coughs> great temptation <laughs> is to think that after we are baptized, we're going to somehow be in heaven already. That isn't the way it is either. We have to keep trying. What happens is hidden, is veiled. We have to have faith in God and do our best. The early church, as the church grew, began to realize this more and more and once the church ceased to be persecuted, 
So there was not much apostasy anymore. And adultery was already something that was not talked about unless it was out in the open. So the, cha the church changed its practice from public confession to private confession. And all confessions now were private between us and God in the sacrament through the minister of the church. But to emphasize that it's a mystery that takes place in our hearts and in our souls. And the prying eyes can sometimes destroy that mystery. Even our own prying eyes sometimes, when we demand to understand, we live, we should try to work at our salvation in fear and trembling, but also in a hidden way, in a respectful way, in a way that respects the mystery that's taking place in the encounter between the creature and his creator. This is the message I want to leave with you today as we celebrate the baptism of the Lord. As we reconnect with our baptism, our own baptism. The church said from the beginning, baptism can only happen once because it doesn't need, you don't need to be baptized a second time. <coughs> that would be a heresy. But the church had to accommodate and said, ah, but people still sin. So we're going to introduce confession like a second baptism. It's not a second baptism, but it's kind of like a second baptism. And in a more dramatic life, of course, monastic life, monastic tonsuring, which is like a second baptism. I think these are important reflections in this present crisis in the church. I don't have answers to the details. They are very complex. But we have to avoid simplistic answers, simplistic solutions, because they don't exist. Simple as that. God, for better or for worse, made us in his own image, complex, nuanced, able to choose right and wrong. And sometimes, often, confused between what is right and what is wrong, and just attempting to do our best. Most of us, and this is something that the, the, the world can't see, the secular world can't see, and therefore accuses the church of hypocrisy. Most of us are not saints. In fact, no, one's, no one is. Even Our Lady isn't completely, completely. Well, she's without sin, but she's the only saint. All the other saints, no matter how great, are sinful. That's reality. But thanks be to God, most of us, in the church at least, <coughs> most of us, even the bishops, are not demons either. I know sometimes it's hard to believe, <laughs> but we're not saints or demons, not angels or demons. We're just ordinary people trying to do our best. And that's what the faith is. That's what the faith is. If we demand those extremes, we're going to be sorely disappointed. So let us accept our faith maturely, deeply, in a way that is consonant with scriptures, the, tradition, the teaching of the church, revelation, but also the tradition of the church, human reason, how the church has developed in its history and has learned the hard way 
that Christians, even good Christians, even hierarchs, sometimes monks even, still a sinful people, even after baptism. So we are left with two options, just like the early Christians were. We can turn away from the church and say, this is all hypocrisy, this is hocus pocus, this is bunkum. It's not true, it's all a, it's all a, an act. That's one option. Because that's what it looks like externally, I know my life does. Or we can say, hold on, we might not be able, we might not be seeing the whole picture. Maybe God knows better than me what's really going on. And that there is hope. And that there is hope. I hope that's the option you choose for yourself. I hope the bishops who have just finished, the American bishops just finished their retreat about two hours from here in Mandalay. I hope that's the conclusion they came at the end of their retreat, that there is hope and therefore they should take courage. That's the answer I want to leave with you today. We need to recommit ourselves to our baptism our baptismal promise, but in a realistic, human way, in accord with church tradition and the history of the church, not some sort of secular, fairy tale understanding of what it means to be holy, as if they would know.
Teresa, Peter, Sarah, Grace, Peter, Joseph, Lawrence, Shirley, Ruthie, and Bob, and for all who have asked for our prayers and worthy that we are. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. We pray for the blessing of remember founders of this holy house, for all our brothers and sisters who have gone to the rescue for us and lies keep here in this village in the true faith and for the Orthodox everywhere, especially those among the departed, commemorating the diptych this monastery. For the departed servants of God, Patricia, Paul, Antonio, Helen, David, Lorenza, Catherine, for the priest, Robert, the nun, Mary, Renilda, for Jeff, Timothy, Catherine, Edward, Travis, and Mrs. Curry, that they may be pardoned of their offenses, both voluntary and involuntary. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. house for those who labor in service of those who sing and for the people here prayers and ways for your great and abundant mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Because you are merciful, O God, and love mankind, and to you do we ascribe glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto the ages.
through whom the Holy Spirit is made manifest, the Spirit of truth, the grace of sonship, the pledge of the inheritance to come, the first fruit, the first fruit of the eternity of peace, the life giving power, the source of sanctification, through whom every rational and intelligent creature is empowered, worships you and ascribes to you the everlasting hymn of glory, because all kings are your servants. For angels, like angels, thrones, dominions, principalities, authorities, powers, and the many of the seraphim praise you. Around you stand the seraphim. The one has six wings, and the other has six wings, and with two they cover their faces, with two they feet, and with two they fly. As they cry to one another with unceasing voices, and never silent things of glory. Sing ye the song of triumph, crying aloud, raising their voices, and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy. Father, 
even thanks, bless, hallowed, and broken. He gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take ye, this is my body, which is broken for you for the remission of sin. Of the fallen, as the 
understanding of the wonders of thy childbirth. O thou hope your bride of all truly blessed mother, through thee have we found full and perfect salvation, and framing be a fitting hymn of thanksgiving. Bring it as a gift as to a Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Lord, deliverance from all affliction, 
at the drink and strength. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, and mercy in the sand. Keep us, O God, by your grace. Lord have mercy.
Approach with fear of God, with faith and with love. And oh, man, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Son is the Lord, and has shown himself to us. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Alleluia. For his mercy endures forever, hallelujah. Oh, give thanks to the God of God, hallelujah. For his mercy endures forever, hallelujah. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of God, hallelujah. For his mercy. Hallelujah, for his mercy endures forever, hallelujah. 
he was baptized so that recognizing you, Eternal Father, we might worship your beloved Son from heaven, whom you proclaimed at his baptism, and that we might glorify your Holy Spirit, who descended upon him and showed him to the Baptist. In this spirit, you sealed and announced us through baptism and anointed us through baptism, making us sharers in your Christ. Through him, do not fail us sinners, but strengthen us against all evil powers. Strengthen our government against all tyranny and guide us all into your kingdom. In us, may your holy name and that of your only begotten Son and that of your Holy Spirit be glorified now in the heaven and unto the ages of ages. Amen.